for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the fan- the Underdog Fantasy app. Use code MACE, CAM, or STAT to get up to $250 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a special pick. It's the easiest way to win on Underdog. I'm Trista Crick, somehow still filling in for the great STAT baby, Treasure Wilson, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Thanks, guys, for having me on. And in terms of the gentrification level, are we like at the Whole Foods in the hood spot? Like, or is it Starbucks? That's the thing. Yeah. May said he's going to take you to the Jamaican restaurant. Yeah, you, you haven't been to Hot Pot yet. Yeah, you eat beef patties and oxtail? I'm in. I'm at, like, listen, I'm just here for the vibes. I said I like the food and I like the neighborhood. All right. But have you ever had Jamaican food? Oh, yeah. I've got a friend who is... One part Jamaican, one part Dominican. So we get oxtail. We'll get <laughs> you got a lot of friends. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, hey, not, Chris, not, that's not always a sign. <laughs> when you ask listen. somebody something, they say, I got I got a white friend that I go golfing <laughs> with. No, I've got many, I got many friends. Got many friends. Not like that. I'm not, I don't mean it. <laughs> that made it sound like way different yeah. than it was. Way, way different. No, no. Uh, Let's get into some women's basketball. Uh, The WNBA had its all-star game. And people are saying that it might have been the greatest all-star game in the history of any sport. That's a lot. That's a lot of praise. Team USA played against Team WNBA made up of players of Team USA basketball that were not good enough to play in the Olympics. Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Arike Agumbawale, Jonquel Jones, and the Team USA Team got their asses handed to them by Team WNBA. 117-109. Caitlin Clark had 10 assists. Angel had a double-double. Arike waxed them. 34 on their dome piece. All-star game record. 21 of those came in the third quarter. Thoughts on, on what this means for the Olympic team and, and women's basketball? I'll go to you first, Mace. Um, 32 on a dome piece was crazy, Chris. That was really <laughs> wild, but... We're going to let we're going to let that slide, you oh. know, pause. That was crazy. But when you think of this as being a, a the best All-Star game, I got some sentimental All-Star games that I remember that this is up there, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to put that over the 92 All-Star game where Magic came back with HIV and and almost got the MVP. Did he get the MVP that year? I believe he got the, for the All-Star game. Yeah, I think he got the MVP. Remember, at the half court, nobody wanted to touch him. He was just coming down, hitting baskets, and it seemed like they beat them by, like, 40 points. Everybody was letting Magic get baskets. That's a real um, memorable All-Star weekend, as well as the All-Star weekend when Jordan and Kobe was playing. I think that was the um, year 98. That was a good one, too. I will put this one up there with 98. But definitely not 2003. That was the year when um, I think 50 Cent was dropping um, Get Ready to Die. Or what was that? Um, Oh, man. It's Get Rich or Die Trying. And that was in Atlanta. That's so cool. I remember that All-Star Weekend. This is when Jordan and Kobe went head up. And it was just a great, great weekend. So when they say the best All-Star Weekend game of all times... I'm not sure if I could give it the all-star weekend of all time, not, but I could definitely see it like third or fourth. What What do you you think, think, Cam? So on this show, on this show a lot, like we, we go back to like nineties and, um, 
80s and stuff like that. And sometimes I wonder to myself, it's like, when I was like 12 in the 80s or whatever, <laughs> and niggas be like, yo, the 1955 <laughs> joint? Yo, that was the one with Bill Russell <laughs> against Wilt. It was crazy that time, yo. And it probably was, but you don't be there to get it. So, yeah. And I'm, I was there for every one of them all-star games that you just named, which was all phenomenal. I remember that even like when Mad Niggas didn't want to fuck with Magic, Carl Malone didn't like, Carl Malone wanted him out the league. I just remember yeah. those situations. But when you're dealing with somebody who's 22 years old, they like, yeah, these niggas go oh, Yeah, again. I'm sick of it, man. <laughs> I'm sick of it, man. And those were all great all-star games, which I'm not going to compare and say that this woman's game was better than any of those all-star games. I'm not even going to be unfair to the women's game that I seen yesterday. The problem is this, is that we haven't seen a men's all-star game so good in so long that we like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Like, yeah. Mace named all these good. This wasn't even this century, the shit that he made. <laughs> it was a whole nother in the last century. That's how long it's been since niggas seen a good male all-star game. Listen, I watched this game from start to finish. This shit was amazing, man. Um, I, it's so many different things you could take away from this. What I will say and start off is with this is that, and we're going to talk about a, a few things later on in the show. I won't jump the gun. But we in the United States in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I tell you that right now. America, we in trouble now. I don't know how good these other foreign teams are as far as women is concerned. Now I know when the WNBA isn't, <clears throat> pardon me, isn't in in play. A lot of our female players go to other countries to get money when they're not playing in the WNBA. So I'm not. I can't see and say who's good and who's not. I haven't been keeping up with foreign women's basketball, but. Listen, they got scraped, and it didn't even look like it was close for a while. And not only not look, didn't look close, it looked like, you know, when a fight is defeated, it's not, you know, they be like, yo, nah, we still in it. They look defeated from the middle of the third quarter for the rest of the game. How, yo, Tris, how you pronounce shorty name? Enrique? I don't want to say a shit wrong. Enrique Agumbawale. I'm going to go Enrique. Enrique? Enrique bust yep. ass, yo. I, yo, shit, yo, my nigga. The shit that Enrique was doing? Hey, yo, listen. Now, you you and I pay your finalists. You made the I pay your finalists. Because you got the shit you got to do. You got to get niggas off you and all that. I don't know. She was, and when Caitlin Clark said this, I didn't pay it any mind because what it is is that I hear a team is so terrible that we're missing out on this talent. Uh, Caitlin Clark says she thinks she's the best one-on-one -on -one player in the league, and she has zero points at halftime. Came and had 22 or 23, if I'm not mistaken, in the third quarter alone. And not only had it, this is a glimpse, the United States team that's supposed to go represent us. Yeah. Yo, Angel Reese looking crazy. She's, listen, I, I didn't even, it looked like Asia Wilson was having problems in the second half with Angel Reese. She was bullying. She's trying to bully her. Angel Reese wasn't letting her get the position that she wanted to get. Look, Angel Reese is a walking double-double, too. She just gets double-doubles in her sleep. First All-Star game, uh, another double-double. Uh, Caitlin Clark set, the, set a rookie record with 10 assists. One assist from tying the overall WNBA assist record. This was sensational for the women All-Stars being the American team. And after the game, uh, Cheryl Miller, who actually coached the game, she's like, yo, I'm so happy I had this opportunity because these girls really want to beat their ass. Like, they try, you know, they'd be like, oh, but well, we want to wish them <laughs> off and have a nice trip to yeah. Paris. Cheryl Miller spilled the beans. She was like, yo, I'm glad I got the coach. They really want to win. And, you know, when they interview people like Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese, they'd be like, no, you know, hopefully one day we could be on, on America on Team USA. Like, yeah, y'all <laughs> missed out on niggas. <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, fucked up this thing. And, uh, what I would like to say, Ben Fuatsi Mace has probably something else to say, and I know Tris has something to say. What I will say is this real quick, wrapping this, uh, my, my statement up for this segment, is that, Diana Taurasi, you right, reality is coming. And it was dumb niggas. <laughs> it's Andrew Reese. It's Caitlin Clark. It's Enrique. It's that, all that reality. You getting smacked with that shit. You tried to give a little speech after it's over. Yeah, this is what we should do. You see, we don't want to take that to Paris and da da da. 
Nah, nah. nah. <laughs> that little speech I have to talk about. Let's let's take this loss on the chin and we get ready. Because they had to leave to go to London right after the game. They it wasn't no other. They gotta go. Yo, I don't know. I don't know. I like I said, I can't tell you what the other countries' team, women's teams are like, but the All Stars for America killed the USA team, and I loved every bit of it. And it wasn't just those three. The whole team did everything they needed to do. Forget Shorty with the left hand name. She was acting, listen, crazy. I thought, I'm not going to say the best All-Star game ever because, look, we dragging it, all right? <laughs> We're dragging it. <laughs> We're dragging it. It's just that the American men's uh, All-Star game hasn't been, I mean, yeah, say not American, the regular NBA All-Star game. It's been horrible for years. They don't care. They don't play defense. Look, it's just a catastrophe since... Uh, probably more than 10 years, maybe 12, 13 years, this All-Star game hasn't mean shit. Yesterday, you could tell that meant something. Yeah, and and Team USA coach Cheryl Reeve, she's a petty bitch. Like, can we be honest? Like, she she's also the coach of the Minnesota Lynx. Just like two weeks ago, Cheryl Reeve was playing the Indiana Fever. The Minnesota Lynx were in Minnesota. Somebody asked her, like, hey, how do you feel about the fact that Caitlin Clark fans travel? And she literally said, I give two shits about that. And the Minnesota Lynx are a good team now. And Caitlin Clark and them girls came up into their house, got loud as fuck, and smacked them up, put them on the hibachi. And she's the one who said, oh, Caitlin Clark's not ready. She's going to be a distraction in France. And Caitlin Clark has just been burning her up ever since. Also, Arike Agumbawale, she got left off of Team USA in 2021. Guess what she did? She put the team on her back in that All-Star game then as well. She had 26, got the MVP in that one, and they got the dub. And so now for her to get passed over again, they're sleep. Stop sleeping on Arike, Cheryl Reeve. Like she got 34 on you. It's insane. Also, like in you said, you half. can't lose to the snubs. Yeah. 21 in the third quarter. You can't lose to the snubs. It's embarrassing. Um, I did want to, to follow up because you guys kind of mentioned it exactly what I wanted to get your thoughts on is that, you know, that physicality in the women's game was so good. You know, you could tell they cared. For you guys, what do you think it would take for the NBA All-Star Game to be back how we remember it in the 90s? One of the things they would have to do to make the game interesting again is go back to the East versus the West. I think this whole picking teams has, has, has put a weird a weird feeling in the game. And I want to remember Shorty name as Enrique Suave. I'm calling her Enrique Suave from now on. She was looking too smooth out there. Yeah, she's nice. Um, and I know what you're talking about, too, Tris. I seen that game. Actually, I just I'm not gonna say I seen the whole game. I seen about 20 minutes of highlights of that game where Caitlin Clark is in Minnesota going like this, yeah, and the whole crowd is cheering Caitlin Clark. So mm -hmm. she's not in Indiana, she's in Minnesota, and the whole crowd is going, Caitlin, and I'm sitting there like, what the fuck going on? I didn't know the information that you didn't until you just said it, why it was so many Caitlin Clark fans in Minnesota, because I was confused about it. Like, now this is just, because in my brain, I'm sitting there saying, this is just fucking ridiculous. Yeah. There's just too many fucking fans everywhere that she gets a standing ovation in Minnesota. But now I know what basically triggered that. Thank you for that information. Also, what you just mentioned as well. Last time they did this format, I didn't bring that up, but you did. MVP. So now Enrique's a two-time MVP, which you just mentioned, and she's getting looked over. I didn't see nobody on the court better than her, let alone just uh, the WNBA All-Stars. I didn't see anybody on Team USA. Now, let me ask you something, Trish, real quick before I answer your question. What's her team's record that we're not seeing enough of her? Oh, she's the the Dallas Wings are not a good team. They right. I think they're five and I think they have five wins. Let me see their record. Yeah, but the point is we're not seeing this girl because her team isn't good. And listen, yes. she and this is what I'm talking about. When you get the stage and you get the opportunity to shine, that's what you're supposed to do. A great job, Enrique. I was very impressed. Not just with the threes you were making, not just with the 21 points, but the bag you was in. I, I didn't know you had that type of bag. You could reach in there and start going crazy. It wasn't just the threes. I'm like, bah, bah, bah. The, yo, very impressive. Now, to answer your question, Tris, 
To make the All-Star game better is this. It's not even hard, pause. America against not America. And that, that'll be the competition. Now I know that it'll be people from different countries against America, but this will make the game better to me because it's nothing more that and it's nothing more important or get more joyful or anything or whatever you want to call it for foreigners to beat Americans and whatever. It don't matter. They think everybody thinks that we're the shit. No, every part of me, everybody thinks that we think we're the shit. And we are the shit a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? But they cannot wait to beat us in anything. So if you got uh, Shea Gildress Alexander, uh, fucking the Greek freak, Joker, <laughs> Luca, Jamal Murray, um, whoever else I'm not thinking of at the time, against Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Ant-Man, Steph Curry, uh, Jalen Bruns, whoever, I think that would make the game way more competition because I think that the foreigners would definitely want to beat Americans no matter if they're all from the same country or not. Yeah, that's facts. I mean, I think you're absolutely right. These guys aren't incentivized by money. We're seeing it. And I think that you, you saw Kawhi Leonard on one leg trying to play for Team USA where they had to kick his ass back to to LA or Costa Rica or wherever he was at on vacation. They're like, sorry, Kawhi, you're, you're not right. You're probably going to be at the end of the bench. And he was trying to play. So yeah, I think that's the only way for NBA players generally to give a shit specifically like Luca Jokic. Those guys don't care unless it's to beat that ass, unless it's to beat America's ass. Um, let's, let's move forward. Speaking of the Olympics, the men's team USA, almost had the most embarrassing loss in their history, had to go on a run. They win 101-100 in a game that should have lost. LeBron ended up saving them in the end. They were 43-and-a-half-point favorites. That's insane. And they trailed by 14 and a half. AD, Embiid, and Ant all got played up by JT Thor. JT Thor, that's a name. Carlick Jones and Wenyan Gabriel. Mace, what are your thoughts on this dream team almost losing to a nation that is not even old enough for Josh Giddy to be interested? Well, you know, last week, Cam was saying he was nervous. This week, we should be biting our nails, for real. This, this week, we should need security with this team. This team is showing all kind of signs that that they're not to be bet on. I mean, if they had, if they were a 40-point favorite and they won by one, this is not including that. This this Sudan team is ranked 33rd in world rankings. Like, come on now. If we talk in Olympics, you win by one against the 33rd ranked team in the in the world. This is this is this is scary. And to think Almost when you're looking at this team, another thing that I wanted to point out is that they have the lowest of any 12 nation, 12 nations. They're the lowest out of 12 nations in, in ranking as well. So that means no matter where you would put this team, this is the lowest. This is like barely qualifying as a as a as a country's team. And you win by one is just is scary in itself because this USA team is loaded with every type of player from from point guard with crazy handles to to shooters of all time. But a lot of people are saying this is an aging team and we're probably going to get into that later. But this is a very name driven team, but not a youthful team. And I don't want to get too deep into that pause because. That's something we got to deal with a little bit later, but it's the aging of it on paper. All these names sound great, but when you put them against other teams, it's like other teams have just as much talent. They just don't have the name. And that's what we're seeing with this team. Every time they get in front of somebody that have the same talent it's, it's almost like they're neck and neck because we're not looking at this like, yes, this is a LeBron. Yes, this is this person but you're seeing the later years of it. And we couldn't see this in the NBA, but now we're definitely starting to see it on the world scale. Killer? 
Told niggas, niggas in trouble. <laughs> niggas is in trouble. I told niggas. <laughs> First, I want to give a shout out to Lou Aldang. Pause. <laughs> if his name is Pause, I don't know. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> Lou Aldang had a very, very good career in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Outstanding career in the NBA. Um, so he knows the caliber of players that's in the NBA. And the caliber of players that he was playing against in the NBA were a little tougher than the players that's playing today in the NBA. So he's doing an outstanding job over there, uh, recruiting players, getting them ready for what it's going to be like to play against America, so on and so forth. Um, so I just want to give him a shout out because a lot of people and a lot of young people probably don't even know who Luau Deng is. Um, secondly, me and Church was walking in here earlier and Church reminded me that Bo Bowl is from Sudan. If Bo Bowl is on this team, a lot of people are in trouble. I have no idea why he's not on this team. Bo Bowl is if on Sudan yesterday or day before yesterday, U.S. loses. It's just that simple. They had a lot of good players on Sudan that I was shocked about. But I tell you this much. They play America again, and I know their confidence is going to be up. So America, you should get ready for that. Now back to America. This team needs Kevin Durant back bad. Uh, Kevin Durant, if you if you fucked up, bro, because this is my brother too, don't play. <laughs> we need you in the season more. We don't need you for these three weeks. I'd rather get Kevin Durant from October to May or June than Kevin Durant get hurt in this shit and we don't see him for another year. We don't got time for that. Uh, these niggas was losing by 20, 25 at one point. You seen the game, Wayne? Right? Hell yeah. Niggas was down 20, 25. Mm -hmm. Shit, wow. Yeah. But what I will say is this before I throw it to Trish, and, I, and if we'll circle back, I have some more things to say. But what I'll say to the, is this. We got to start appreciating LeBron. I'm not saying we don't. I'm, I'm not saying we don't, for real. I'm, I'm not on no Ohio shit. <laughs> but that man said, give me the ball and get out the way. Now, yeah. we he, we shouldn't have been in that position, pause. We shouldn't even been in the position where 39-year-old LeBron James is saying, you know what, give me the rock and get out the way. That's what LeBron did yesterday, and we keep seeing this time and time again, and we want to nitpick on his career, and he's not a final shooter, and he doesn't want to shoot the shot, and this, that. That man put the, put the team on his back and got the victory now. I don't think there's no time to be celebrating because we shouldn't have be even been <laughs> yeah, in the position to, to be say. fucking winning by one point. This ain't the time for that. Yeah, this, this ain't the time <laughs> for that. This is, this is what I was telling niggas last week when Mace was like, it's a foregone conclusion. I'm like, I don't know if it's a foregone conclusion, murder now. Listen, maybe this will get you us like, hey, man, we got to do something. But what I will say is Kevin Durant isn't playing. That's what I will say. But you should not have been in that position at all that, and listen, Sudan could have still won. Mm -hmm. They had two, two and a half shots. They, they just missed on. That might have been a foul. Yeah, at the end of the game. Yeah, I, I thought it was a foul. Yeah, me too. I ain't want to say nothing. No, <laughs> that could have been an one. <laughs> I ain't want to say nothing. No, I'm American. No, that, I ain't want to say nothing. I seen a foul on that game from the camera down bottom pause. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, we are in trouble. This was not a good weekend for America. And then the last thing, LeBron walking to the locker room talking about, I like these better than the blowouts. These are the ones I like right here. Yo, LeBron, nobody got time for that. <laughs> yeah, pulling his arm <laughs> off like yeah. this was game Yo, seven. Told, like, LeBron, chill out, That nigga was walking to the <laughs> locker room talking about, these are the ones I like. I like the ones that's close like this. Everybody else like, word? <laughs> yeah, all right, man. That was a bitty Bro. move to the basket. That too. was crazy, man. Yo, and, and you saw what AD said? AD said the reason why they underperformed, pause, was because they made it to the arena late and that it was so much traffic. So they they nobody was able to get into their regular routine. You've been oh doing God. this for however many years, AD. <laughs> you should have a routine anyway when the game starts. <laughs> you got to have an emergency routine. Come on, you're a pro. Yeah, Tristan. I wasn't going to say... I wasn't going to say anything about my opinion on Sudan because I want to keep the show moving. There's so many things to talk about. But like A.D. is is just not the one to be talking about why he's not living up to expectations. Like this is this is the South Sudan. Right. Like 
I'm not even going to try and, and make it out to be more like illustrious than it is. Like I'm happy for Luol Deng and he's built that team, but like they can't even have Bull Bull on the team because they have, they don't have the ability to get health insurance for current NBA players on that roster. Right. I mean, this is a, a nation that is 13 years old. That's why I said like Josh Giddy isn't even effing with, with the, the nation of South Sudan. It's like right at the cutoff for jo- Josh Giddy. So, but the physical, but the physicality of, of FIBA play and international play is such to a higher degree than the NBA. And you've got Embiid foul hunting. And, and that to me makes his interview with New York Times so wild. So Joel Embiid guys came out and, and went on the New York Times and did an interview and basically said exactly what May said, that this team is kind of washed. He said, you look at the talent that the U.S. has, but there's equal talent on other teams. And the talent that's on the U.S. team, you also have to understand most, most of these guys are older. The LeBron now is not the LeBron that was a couple of years ago, so it's a big difference. Mace, do you think Embiid has a point or does Embiid need to take a look in the mirror before deciding to call LeBron James washed, especially considering what he did to get them that win? Yeah, this sound like slick hating, Chris. I'm not going to lie to you. This definitely sound like slick hating. You know how you bring somebody on a team, nigga really don't want to be there, but he there and things ain't going his way. So he kind of talking to the, the, the media the wrong way. This is what it sounds like Embiid is doing. Embiid, number one, if you were dominating, it wouldn't matter how old they are. That's the real. That's why they brought you on the team to dominate pause on the inside. And, and that's not wow. happening. So you're making it harder for everybody else. And to think about this, when he says the team is older, everybody knows that. That's why they're stacking up and they try to bring a lot of the young players or the younger players like um, Halliburton and um, Derek White. And some of us may say, like myself, why are they even on the team? But now it makes sense because you have those elder players. But I don't look at Stephen Curry as elder. One time he got on the court and he was just making threes from everywhere. So we're really not going to play that game, Joel. We're really not going to let you play that game, especially with, with Curry. You're not going to play that. And Drew Holiday is definitely you're not going to play that. And not even LeBron because LeBron ended up getting a game winner. Even, even though it was below the rim, it was still a basket. Now, if somebody would have punched it out of the... <laughs> <laughs> That would have been crazy. You know what I mean? Oh, but nigga would have batted that shot and then pushed him. Nigga, what are you doing? That would have been crazy, but it didn't happen. He got the basket. What do you say, Killer? Joe oh, and beat on some. <laughs> he he come in tree. He come in, he come in treason right now, my <laughs> nigga. I don't know if y'all know what treason is, but this nigga is just about committing treason, my nigga. <laughs> yeah. Yo, my nigga. After everything they did to get him Yo, on the team. Yo, my nigga, what are you doing, bro? Even if this is facts, what you saying? Why would you say this when the Olympics is about to start? Bro, you you the one who just came off injury. You the one who fouled out with fucking 12. With, you played 12 minutes, had six fouls. You still doing dirty plays in it. Bro, why would you do this? Find out this nigga's the monkey wrench. Yo, white, this nigga <laughs> might be the monkey wrench in the whole yeah, shit, so my well. nigga, on purpose. Like, did they send this nigga? <laughs> the Sudan secretly sent this nigga. Could be the black cat. <laughs> Even though I know he's not from Sudan, don't get me wrong. I'm not. But Carlo, this nigga's working there. Why the fuck would a nigga? Say that right before the Olympics start. Like, yo, nah, niggas is washed, bro. There's a bunch of it's a bunch of names on the team and shit. You know, you of course you know LeBron, of course you know Steph Curry, no, of course you know Kevin Durant. Niggas, <laughs> niggas washed, you ask me. Like, why would you say that? Yo, my yo, yeah, that's crazy. I would it should be, yo, Steve Kerr. Coach K order. It should be an uh, immediate investigation, internal affairs. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck is going on? Because did he have a decent game yet? Chris, has, has he had a decent game yet? It's been no. three games. They no. all, Yeah, they all fucking suspect. 
Keep an eye on that nigga. That nigga fucking make us lose the Olympics. <laughs> we got to think about this nigga green card. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Might be under yeah. investigation. I don't like this right before the Olympics start. That's my answer, Trish. I think he's way out of line. Way the fuck out of line. Yeah, there was a lot of moves bust for this nigga, for real. Remember all the things they had to do to get him there? Clearances, um, waivers. Come on, Joel. This is definitely a come on, my nigga moment. Like, yo, you get here, and then out of all of the places you could have done this with, you didn't do it with the Philly newspaper. You went to New York, so you're well out of pocket for this. Even Philly is upset yeah, he- with you. That was that was a wild place for that to occur as well. And so then you've got LeBron taking over, turning back the clock, making that game winning layup with eight seconds left off of MB calling him washed. So I was thinking, like, I want to hear from you guys. Mace, if if you were to go back in time and pick out of all the Team USA players in history, top five that you would want with the ball in their hands in that situation in an, in an Olympic setting. That's important. Who would you take? Um, Cam, if he, if I'm not under the basket, that's probably who I would want with the ball. If I'm not under the basket. I think but. she mean that niggas who've been in the Olympics. Right. I think okay. you're just trying to find a reason to remind niggas. <laughs> <laughs> you look for any way to remind niggas. 14 times a year. <laughs> I, I don't know why not over it, White. I, I thought I... 14 times, 14, like 14 a year. 14 times a year, he just finds a way. That's why when yeah. we, that's why when my caption we did this deal, I said now we even his shit at the bottom. I, was like, yeah. I don't care. I, I wrote that. At the, I said nah, now it we even. It worked out. It worked out. God, he'll find a way. Don't worry about it. We we'll hit about seven more times before twenty twenty four is over. It's all good. I wish oh, I had man. more highlights, man. <laughs> No, nah, oh, no, nah, that was just, I just said that to be funny. <laughs> um, Kobe. Kobe is one of the um, top players I would want with the ball. Then Durant, number two. Jordan, number three. Um, in an in Olympic setting. And these are just five players. It doesn't mean this is the first or third person. Then I would have to put D. Wade and Melo. D. Wade and Melo. Those are my um top five, my top five: Jordan, D Wade, Melo, Kobe, Durant. That's what I want. Um, what about you, Cam? This is my top five, uh, in order: Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, uh, Kevin Durant, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Mm. 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 Gotta go magic. Mm. I forgot. Larry Legend. Mm. Niggas be sleeping on. <laughs> it's been so many good small forwards pause that people forget. Yeah, you're right. Larry. If anybody you want with the ball, you want you want Bert. Definitely. He'll make the For pass or the uh, shot. He would. He would. For me, it's MJ, Kobe, LeBron. And I was having a really hard time deciding between KD and Bird. So I'm just going to 1A, 1B him. And then Carmelo in the Olympics was just different. Mm-hmm. Like he was scoring two and a half points per minute. He like was shooting 80% from three. And like he was playing with D Wade, KD, Braun. And he was the best pure scorer there. So I'm not mad at that list. Magic. All right, let's go to, let's go to break. Um, when we return, we discuss the Celtics paying who? How much money? Do we even know this guy? Everybody's getting bread in Boston. Do not go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I in this 
just want to be free I wish somebody told me the rules Disagreements let her win And it's cool Even when Welcome back. It's time to go over our underdog fantasy picks of the day. The NFL season is just right around the corner, and there's just a really big game in week one. My Dallas Cowboys play the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Dallas loses their defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, to Washington. So that's a nugget to consider. And there are major questions about whether we're ever going to see Houston Texans version of Deshaun Watson ever again on the field. Underdog has Deshaun Watson's passing number at 224 and a half yards for that game. Are you going higher or lower, Mace? Lower. How long you been a Are Cowboy fan? Higher? How long you been a Cowboy fan? <laughs> was, that, that. was that info I should not have shared? Yeah, nah, let's get, like yeah. well get it out here now. Yeah. How long have it's you been a Cowboy fan? Yeah. Since I was about eight, my sister was dating somebody from... I don't even think he was really from Dallas. I think he was like from Texarkana, you know, that little like square part, Texas part, I think Arkansas, I think. And so he was a big Dallas fan. Yeah. So he was a big Dallas fan. And that was back when it was. So you was four when they won. About that. Yeah. Yeah. Around that. About that. So you just been suffering. It hasn't been good ever since. So you've been suffering. Are you one of these people that say. Don't you think that's good enough though? That's bad. It's good punishment. Yeah, but what I'm saying, are you one of these people talking about, I just want to know what kind of cow, it's different Dallas Cowboy fans around the country. Are you one of them, this is our year, fans? No. <laughs> okay. no, I'm one of the, I don't even care if we make the playoffs this year because it doesn't matter. The organization's making bad decisions. They brought back the ghost of Ezekiel Elliott when they already cut him. The backup guy is my height. I'm yeah. not even playing. Yeah, a realistic cowboy oh. fan. A real that's what I like. A realistic <laughs> she said cowboy the fan. Back is all that, right. Yeah, that's that because you know why they be delusional, like yeah. the Knicks fans sometimes. They just get delusional. This I appreciate a realistic cowboy fan. Deshaun Watson lower. Lower. Um, we also talked last show about where Dak Prescott ranks in the hierarchy of quarterbacks. He goes against the nasty Cleveland D. Pause. On the road. <laughs> Underdog has Dak's passing number at 264 and a half yards. Higher or lower, Cam? Lower. Yeah, lower. Now, before you go to question number three, do you have a cowboy hat or cowgirl hat? Like a, like the one that's like a hat hat or like the one that's like... Weehaw. Yeah. So if you are if you are a cowboy fan, so I want to know, do you have a cowboy hat? I don't have the I don't have the yeehaw hat. I don't right. I don't own those. No, no boots, no hat. That would be a good <laughs> bet though. If I lose a bet, that would be a good one to make me wear that. I've got a peanut head too. There's no way. I would probably it would probably just sink down on me like Yosemite Sam. Anyway, underdog has Dallas's receiver, CeeDee Lamb's receiving yard set at 94 and a half. Wow. Higher or lower, Mace? I'm going higher on that. Higher or lower, Cam? What game of the season is this? First game. This is the first Week game. One. <laughs> lower. Yeah, CD went over that nine times last season. Absolutely disgusting. I agree. Lower. Make sure you download the underdog app and you can make your picks too. So let's talk a little NBA. Sam Hauser? Sam Hauser agreed today to a four-year, $45 million extension. I, I mean, a lot of NBA fans are kind of like, who? Um, he averaged 5.4 points and 15 minutes per game in the NBA playoffs. To be fair, he is a really good three-point shooter. He is a white forward. Um, that's a lot of money, though, to give a guy that deep in the rotation. <laughs> Um, Boston's been going insane since they won a chip. They're handing out money left and right like it's nothing. Um, this team's stat, guys. Like, they've given up over a billion dollars in contracts in the last 12 months. Most of those guys are tied up, pause, through 2028. <laughs> um, the team is stacked, like I said. Is there any true competitor, Mace, against the Celtics heading into this season and furthermore into the foreseeable future? Um... Yeah. Yeah, the Sixers, the Sixers are definitely competitors. Um depending on how well J- 
Joel and B performs in this Olympic because there's something about the Olympics that spews over and spills over into the NBA season. Now, when it comes to this guy, Sam Hauser, 45 million for four years when when we don't even know who this person is. That's a that's a great come up. You got to think this guy was getting two million dollars probably just a couple of years ago. How many years ago was that? When he was a rookie, he had a rookie deal for two million, and and now he's up to four forty five million. This is this is a jump, especially when we didn't see him play. He's averaging five points. I mean, the people getting single doubles is really getting paid these days. <laughs> I don't know how well it came over through the the um commercials. What they called it, the um the money, the extra money that came to the NBA. But it did them very, very well because even people with no name, I, I know Gold Diggers got to be going crazy. You get any guy in the league these days, he could be making fifty million. What do you think, Cam? You think Sam Hauser's worth the money? That, you think I, I ain't gonna act like I know. <laughs> I don't be sitting up here acting like I know niggas. I don't know. I don't know the nigga. <laughs> this is what I'll say, and, and then, Trish, you might know better than me. To be honest with you, in this climate, this is really not a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, compared to what niggas is getting out here because they just giving away way more money now. But like you said, the Boston Celtics, uh, Jalen Brown, 304, Jason Tatum, 320-something. They just it's a fucking Derek White, one whatever, 120 whatever. They definitely... 126. Away, yeah, they definitely giving away that chicken. We ain't going to act like they not. But I see niggas, I don't know this nigga. I don't, I don't, I can't sit here and act like I know the nigga, <laughs> you know. I mean, they did win. Was he playing last year? Yes. Did he play in the playoffs? 15 minutes, mm -hmm. what 15 was minutes per game in the playoffs, 5.4 points per game, taking about three threes, hitting about 1.25 of them yeah. per game. Pause. I ain't, that nigga ain't make no noise. <laughs> He'll go off the bench at noise. like two threes. Yeah, what we got to do is give, this is what we got to do is do it. 45. Them. Yeah, what we got to do is, and I'm going to start doing some more homework on this nigga right here, the nigga White. Fuck White getting this chicken from. What's he doing his off time? The owner of the Celtics. What is, we got to start worrying about what he doing because he's throwing this money to fuck around. We know what Steve Ballmer do. You know what I'm saying? What do this nigga do? Tris, what do he do besides own the team? Or he want to say he's the governor. What does he do? Yeah, he owns some other teams as well. Um, but that's what I was going to tell you about in just a second. I'll give you his career. He's a venture capitalist. So he has, owns a firm called Highland Capital Partners. And so he owns a couple of teams. I know he does something overseas with soccer as well. But that was going to, what I was going to tell you is, and I wanted to get you guys' and thoughts. Not to, as and not to, cut you, not to cut you off real quick. See, that's the shit that black people are act like they know it. And they, oh, okay, that explains it. He's a venture capitalist. What the fuck is that? <laughs> like, niggas are sitting at home like, oh, that explains it all. <laughs> Think, right, what's a venture capitalist? I don't know. Someone, who, cap someone who capitalizes on a bunch of ventures. <laughs> that guy's right. That's, that's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Harlem nigga. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like word that. Play, word yeah, play. Play. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's, he, he plays he, with the money. That's yeah. what he does. But he throwing it around. Look, I, yeah. I'm not gonna say hate on homeboy chicken. What I say is this: to Brad Stevens, to me, even though he was an exceptional coach, he seems like he's a, a better GM so far. Um, we got to think about this. This is the first year that they actually had chemistry in the last three years as far as coaching is concerned. Uh, homeboy Nia, nee, I call him Nia nee Long Husband because I always mess his name up. He got he left. Um, their coach now, his first year was uh, last year. So they get to uh, Eastern Conference Finals uh, last year for his first year coaching. And then he won the championship in his second year coaching. The year before that, they went to the championship, but the coach that they had got fired. Sometimes it's about continuity, and to me, it took two years of continuity, at least with the coaching department. These players have been playing together. I'm talking about Tatum and Brown at least uh, the last five years. But assembling the pieces, getting the right coaching staff, now seems like the right GM. I don't really see anybody messing with Boston. I like, 
I like the Sixers. I like to say the Sixers because Joel Embiid is always a problem when he's healthy. I don't know what's going on with this Olympic thing. And I like to say the Knicks, but I don't want to sit here and jump out the window and get myself hyped and be like, yeah, yeah, man. Fuck that Knicks going to do it this year. Um, we'll see. Um, they got all their friends that they wanted on the team. Uh, and then they'll be re-signed. Uh, as of right now, you know, it's been a lot of di different talking. I don't know how true it is. But as of right now, they got my nigga uh, Julius Randle still. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I put the Knicks up there. Are they going to beat the Celtics? I'm not sure, but I think that they could get to the Eastern Conference Finals, either them or the Sixers, depending on Joel Embiid's health. I like that. I uh, I agree. I think the Celtics are going to be formidable for a long time. Like you said, Brad Stevens going to go down as one of the better GMs in Celtics history, getting Derek White for what they got him for. They ended up getting a first-round pick to get Chris Stapps Porzingis. They received a first-round pick for him, so that's crazy. Right. So I, I agree with that. But you mentioned Wick Grusbeck, the, the owner um, of the Boston Celtics. How does he have all this chicken? Well, he's not going to pay it all out because he put the team up for sale two days after they won the title. Mm. So they have $197 million in salary just next season before Tatum's extension kicks in. They're going to pay $66 million in luxury tax, which will balloon to a quarter of a billion dollars the next year. So as businessmen, as moguls, as, as men I respect in the, in the money game, are the Celtics mace a good investment to buy right now? Hmm, that's a great question to ask an expert. Um, I would not buy. I would not buy them at this point, business wise. Basketball wise, I would, but business wise, no, because he put it in a place where the the money amount is is not going to even out for the, the money he needs to make. But when you start paying everybody like this, it can only go downward because somebody is not going to produce. And then it's going to be so hard to get rid of these contracts because he's paying everybody that made him look like a genius because he knew he was out. This is almost like what my guy did over there at um, Golden State. He he said, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to get pool where he needs to go. We're going to bring Wiggins in. We're going to pay Draymond. And then he said, you know what? I'm out of here before it goes crazy. And I and I really believe that's what he's looking at, because when you got the championship, you can always go somewhere else and get more money. You're a venture capitalist. So you you you're formidable and putting a lot of money together and going out and doing other ventures. Cam, uh, I think the difference between uh, the nigga and go to state, he's the GM. This nigga's the owner. Yeah. I don't think that he's. Uh, Stupid. He wouldn't have got this money if he was stupid. He like, get this shit while it's hot, nigga. This must be a deal. I'm not going to sit and act like I even know what it's like to sell an NBA team where each team is grossing per year. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I could Google it and find out how much the Boston Celtics made last year. That's a key question. But to me, if you want to get the maximum dollar for the team, this might be the best time. And, and I don't have any knowledge. Yeah. This is just off of me. You still got Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum in their prime. You still got Brad Stevens, coach, um, GM, and looks like you got a coach. You got a coach that's younger than some of the players on the team. These, all these players are in their prime, and we just sat here and said that it doesn't look like Boston is going to be able to be seen uh, at least in the next couple years, minimum, if they keep this core together, and it seems like they're paying to do so. But <clears throat> I trust... Uh, and not from my pocket. I just said I would need more experience. I just don't have the experience. But I don't think any of these owners got to where they got by accident. It's mm -hmm. not, they're not just doing, like we just see Mark Cuban sell 52% of the team and he still goes gets his trophy. He still get on the court and everything, but he doesn't own the majority of the Dallas Mavericks. We've seen that when they won the Western Conference title. And we was like, who the fuck is that holding the Western Conference title trophy? We was like, oh, oh, that's the new nigga. Um, Mark Cuban's not dumb. He got to, you know, he didn't get to where he's at being dumb. So I can't, I can't picture this guy um, being dumb. Secondly, if you buy the team, 
nobody dumb's going to just waste the money. Nobody's going to just go in their fucking sock drawer and be like, yo, and call their niggas like, yo, white, what you got for the Celtics? You got in on it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you damn nah. Yeah. Whoever buys the team is going to be somebody who can afford to keep the team. You got to think about, you know, Steve Ballmer. Uh, the clip has been terrible since he had them motherfuckers. And I'm not saying that homeboy shouldn't have got fired for his racist shit, but there's just been a damn mess over there since Steve Ballmer got the team. Is it his fault? He hired Jerry West. He's hiring Doc Rivers. He's getting rid of Doc Rivers. You say you don't want to be a GM. You just want to be a coach. Okay, he's just paying. Sometimes these niggas just got the chicken to pay, and they want to win. Okay, cool. We need a new stadium. We don't need to be under the Lakers. He getting that chicken somewhere else, so he don't give a fuck. The team is his hobby, but they're not winning. Uh... This is not the case with the Boston Celtics. I think whoever buys it is going to make sure it's a smart investment, but I can't say and answer that, Trish, because I have no knowledge to do business on that bigger scale. I'd be lying to you. Yeah, I think it, I think he got every every piece in place to mark the price up like stupid. You know, listening to Cam, those are, that was a great take. He have everything in place. We just won. Everybody's here. Give me four billion dollars. Give me three. <laughs> you know, that's what it looks like what he did. Locked everybody in, made it turnkey for the investor and say, listen, if you want this, you want this team, there's no excuse not to give me four million dollars. I have the coach in place for years. I have the stars in place for years and everybody is in their youth right now or their prime. All right, let's move on to. Uh, some fighting. Jake Paul, by the way, I interviewed him right before he fought Nate Robinson. He just dusted off another MMA fighter, knocking out Mike Perry with a six-round TKO in their fight on Saturday. Uh, Jake got a ton of heat afterwards, including from Conor McGregor, who said, <laughs> this quote is crazy, Jake Paul is, is the biggest piss bag I have ever seen in my life. 40-pound weight difference, juiced out of his head and still shitting himself in there and then calling out 60 year old mike tyson fresh off of an in-flight medical emergency i swear to god he's a fat can of bitch piss uh i know you guys are big fight fans what did you guys think of uh, jake paul's performance and what do you think this means for his netflix fight with mike tyson <laughs> well this fight actually because I don't have the expertise that um Conor McGregor has, uh, it looked like Jake Paul was looking dominant out there. I mean, to to the naked eye, pause. But I don't. I think this would be a bad fight for Mike. Now that I saw what he did to Mike Perry, this would be a bad fight for Mike, and not because Mike couldn't destroy him. I just don't know where he's at in his later years in life. You know, we all know prime Mike or 10 years away from Mike prime. He still would dust Jake Paul off. But right now with this guy been fighting so consistently, I mean, consistently, I'm, I'm not sure what to believe. And uh, I, but I would love to see him fight Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor seems like he's throwing his name in the hat. Um, I ain't see the fight. I ain't, once Mike Tyson was off the shit, I wasn't throwing no fight party or none of that shit. Perry? What's the nigga name? Mike Perry. Yo, yeah, he knocked the nigga out. Yo, Nick, you know that nigga? Mike Perry? He, he official? Yeah, nigga ain't respect. Really could beat that nigga. Nigga ain't respect. <laughs> nigga went like this. <laughs> nigga did some shit like this. Nick, nigga, if Nick do that, Nick be going to MMA fights and all that. Nigga ain't even respecting the nigga. I'm a good, I don't know. I, don't, I, didn't, I, I wish I would have paid for that. Now, I know they needed to make up for the date. I was it on Netflix still or the zone? What was it on? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. What, exactly. Niggas don't even know where the <laughs> shit was at. We knew the shit I was just on. Saw the highlight. We just knew the nigga was on Netflix, right? We was all like, yo, Netflix getting it in. Niggas trying to put the fight on Netflix. Niggas knew the whole Stilo for the Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. Jake Paul shit. Um, listen, I like Conor McGregor though. Conor McGregor. Yo, Nick, what you think goodie. about Conor McGregor? That nigga, mm -hmm. I just wanted to test you out. <laughs> Make sure you wasn't yeah. hating on anybody. Conor, Conor's official. I fuck with Conor McGregor. Um, the last couple fights, I, I mean, it's not, MMA is boxing two different things. Last couple times I've seen Conor McGregor fight, he got his 
fucking shin kicked off. Yeah. <laughs> nigga kicked that nigga calf off the bone, nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> them little shin kicks can be hurting. Um, I like Conor McGregor. He's a shit talker. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of some shit to say. I didn't watch the fight. Nick don't respect the other nigga. When it wasn't Tyson, I stopped paying attention to the whole shit. To be honest with you, I ain't read the whole shit that we doing today. I don't really give a fuck. I'm be li- I'd be lying to you if I gave a take and being like, well, Mike Tyson better look out. I don't know who the <laughs> fuck he fought, man. <laughs> yeah, the know. way he fought this fight, Mike, should, Mike sh- shouldn't be worried. But he better come from And if prepared. Conor McGregor saying the nigga juiced up, but did he look yeah. like he was juiced yeah. up? <laughs> he might have been getting ready to fight Mike Tyson, the heavyweight, a strong nigga. He might have been getting himself together. I don't know. I don't know, Tris. I don't know, Murder. I don't know what to tell y'all. I didn't see the shit. I, I didn't care. see all his fights, but this fight, he just looked more like a fighter now. You know, maybe before it looked like he was he was on um, YouTube special. Now he looks like a he looks like a fighter. From Glance. Mace, I feel like not skills. You fit in another world. I feel like Mace could be a promoter, like a really good promoter for fights. <laughs> if 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 you Mace were a fighter, or you you were a promoter, would you rather back Jake Paul uh, as his promoter or Shakur Stevenson? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um. <sighs> As a promoter, I I could get money either way because I I could sell both fighters, but I would probably go with. I'm Cam. going with with the white nigga. White nigga get his own bread. He don't even got to box niggas. He beat up basketball <laughs> players. I <laughs> mean, making more than niggas. He ain't even got to do a lot of work with him. You yeah, know what I'm saying? True like too. that nigga does. He got YouTube fans. Niggas forget he was a Disney nigga. He used to be on Disney. He used to fucking uh. A rap, he had a rap album or some shit. That nigga did a lot of other shit besides boxing to where he got as many as 20 million Twitter followers, 20 million uh, YouTube um, subscribers, uh, 20 million fucking uh, Instagram friends. He has a lot of outside influence. Why you think, look, we gotta think about this. Why would Floyd fight his brother? Even though it's exhibition or whatever, yeah. he knew what that brother was going to bring to the table. Them people have a lot of followers, and it wouldn't be hard to promote. All you got to do is skip back and be like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> fuck them up." Slap the like, nigga glasses <laughs> off. Yeah, them niggas, them niggas really make make a um, <laughs> make their own money. It isn't hard to promote. Why you think they sit there and don't have a lot of fights, and then the niggas that they fight is never boxers. They never even fight any boxers. They haven't fought a boxer yet. Yet. Not one time. He, man, I respect the MMA niggas, but they can't use their feet. They can't choke this nigga out. Yeah. They got a bunch of other shit that them niggas be doing. Like, a lot of them aren't knockout artists. Some of them are. You know, you, you know, he fought Nate Diaz or whatever. Like, they knocked a few niggas out. But niggas be choking niggas out. Niggas put niggas in leg locks. We just talked about Conor McGregor fucking shin getting kicked off the knee. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of shit that these niggas can't do when it comes to boxing, so they kind of got to figure it out just promoting itself. How many rounds do you think Mace Jake Paul would last against a real heavyweight b- boxer? Three, three rounds, three, four rounds. Wouldn't go no further than that. Um. I don't know, because that shit all fucked up, too, in a heavyweight division. Tyson Fury just lost his first fight. We thought Deontay Wilder was some wild nigga. Come to find out, he just lost another fight uh, to somebody I had never even heard of. Uh, it's, it's not any consistency or continuity in the heavyweight division right now. I thought we had Tyson Fury, but I just see him super drunk coming out of bar on YouTube the other day to where he was rolling on his face. Pause. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. It depends on who he fights. We can't even name really five solid heavyweights right now. So, Like if he was fighting Andy Ruiz, what do you think? Andy I Ruiz. I haven't seen Andy Ruiz fight in a long time. Like if you're not being, if you're not staying in shape, mm-hmm. you're not staying in the gym and you got bad habits and then you be like, oh, niggas got some money for me and think you could clean it up in four weeks, you might not beat Jake Paul. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, when you're a fighter, there's very few fighters that 
could take time off and get drunk and fucked up like Tyson Fury does and not be consistent in running the gym. Look, we, we, we know Floyd Mayweather pretty well. This nigga jogging tonight, we, he don't even know when he's fighting again. Nigga just yeah. always ready just in case of any time. And then the fighters who don't do that, we always see them slip. The mm-hmm. fighters who always seem to say, I'm going to go on tour. Or I'm going to say, I ain't fighting for the next six, seven months. I'll get back in the gym when I get back in the gym now. Should you have a full training camp in between fights? Absolutely not. But you should jog. You should jump rope. You should keep your stamina up just to stay in shape. And then when it's eight weeks before the fight, get in the training camp. But you can't be taking days off when you're fighting. I know when I played basketball, if I didn't play for five, six days, I felt like I didn't know what was going on. It would take me like an hour to get back in rhythm. Like when you play basketball every day, yeah, in the rhythm. When you don't play, when you're a basketball player, you miss five, six days, unless you like one of them Ali Mo skipped to my Lou ass niggas. I'm saying, you got to practice, you got to get back to rhythm. Who, what boxers do you think Jake Paul can beat? Like, let's let's put that out there. What boxers do you think, and, and Chris, you can get in on this too. What boxers do you think Jake Paul could beat? Do you think Andrew, Andrew Tony? I don't think he could be any boxer that's been fighting consistently for the last five to seven years. Okay. And it depends on what weight class it in. Can he beat Canelo? No, absolutely Exactly. Can not. he beat Jamal Crawford? Absolutely not. Exactly. So it's a bunch of fighters that you could put them against, but then the next question Terrence is... Terrence Crawford? Jamal Crawford in I, basketball. I said Jamal Crawford. Oh, we go. You know what? Yeah. I, I said that the other day. Terrence Crawford. Somebody wrote, you know what? Sin told me that the other day. Yo, the thing about it is oh, we all like black. Him. Yeah. We all black. Man. No he in the Crawford family. Yeah, Crawford, yeah. No dis- <laughs> Sorry, Jamal. Nigga told me I said that the other day. But absolutely, I mean, Terrence Crawford. Maybe I'm thinking about Jamal Crawford because Jingles, you never came back. To play yeah. Jamal Crawford. That's probably why it's on yeah. your mind. Yeah, I, I haven't seen you since Jamal caught the show <laughs> to play one-on-one. You've been missing ever since. You just keep uh, texting me, talking about, Fleet, I need more horsepower. Please, pause. <laughs> I got you, but we're going to need some expla- explanation on why you ain't played Jamal Crawford. But yeah, Terrence Crawford, when it comes to real, and the next question is, what's the weight class? You know, that, that matters a lot, too. Well, let us know in the comments what you think. Who could Jake Paul actually beat that's a legit boxer? Give us your thoughts on that on Team USA. Are we in trouble? The Celtics, we always love to hear your opinions. That's all the time that we have for today. Hold on real quick. As always. Real, real quick. Go ahead. The Celtics make $445 million per year annually. That's all the time that we have for today. As always, shout out to Mason Cam for letting me be on. And as always, it is what it is. What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.